provided Amber, but it was my understanding that if there was someone to be able to be provided to provide some sort of uh, security. security during that hour, that of course you would be permitted to continue. My, my Maybe I'm incorrect on that. But my concern is, why would we hire additional security when you have two to three staff members that are there, that are paid employees there, that could easily be monitoring these kids? What's up? It's uh, not really their job, mm -hmm. is it? Well, it kind of is, though. Right? <laughs> well, they're using the facility. They're using the facility. Mm -hmm. We have a hockey it's tournament. A, a well, let's, let's back up just a bit. For sure. In the time that you've been there, how much rowdyism have you had? Not a lot. This is the worst that it's ever been. We've never had any other place. No. Not, not that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. So you're there, and you're there also? Or uh, you have another staff with you? Well, we, we, we rotate yeah. staff, right? Like okay. We have, yeah. So, having said that, how many people do you think you have there during that hour? We, we go through Just lots. 40 to 60 kids easily a day, if not more. So it's a fair crowd. Yeah. But so I mean, so it could quite easily get out of hand. Well, in the event yeah. that something does happen, but it normally doesn't. You know, I've had kids' parents calling me, hey, why isn't the concession open at lunch anymore? Well, I'm sorry, but we've been we've been closed. Yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. It's it's a place for them to come, keep warm, have a quick lunch, and go back to school because the schools are so close. You know, um, I mean, there's kids obviously that utilize our walks. Now there's kids that are going uptown, but there is still that trek on foot to walk uptown, right? So, uh, I mean, it's it's kind of convenient. For them. So, do you think like they have the they have the concession in the school? like the, uh, the lunch thing, would it be that you're offering better value than the school is offering, or I, I better pricing, or? I couldn't speak on that, I don't know. Because obviously there has to be something of a trend for them to move there. It's just choice. Choice, yeah. That it, would, it would just be the kid's choice. If you're in, nobody wants to, sorry Trevor, but hmm. nobody wants to stay in a building all day long. Hmm. Well, no, that's true. Even if it's yeah. to just go for a walk, buy a pop, or whatever, right. I, I, I totally get yeah. kids leaving. Um, at, especially when they're in high school. They don't want to be, be stuck. The part that I don't understand is if this was something that isn't happening all the time, why were those kids just not banned? Why are, if it's two kids who are doing something, why are 40 kids punished for it? Yeah. And, I, and I get zero mm -hmm. tolerance. Yeah. Again, yeah. I can't comment because that's up to Amber to provide that comment. Violence towards staff is, I get that, 100%. But to punish 40 kids over something that two or four, I, I don't know how many were putting in the parking lot, to be honest. I just don't feel it's fair. Yeah, and we obviously, uh, and it's it just, if you've ever been in a, in, a, in a cafeteria with 40 or 50 kids that you don't know, then, and it just, we're talking about asking the staff members to, you know, handle it. It can be, you know, if you don't have, if you don't know the kids, and you're going to tell them, hey, go do this, good luck. Good luck. It's not going to, it's not going to go, it's not going to happen. But now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't go there, but to say that the staff member, the, the rink attendant, is the one that should be dealing with it, I don't necessarily think that's the other. I don't think that we should shut it down because of two kids. And we don't even know, do we even know who the two kids were. Do we, you know, so not only should they not be there at lunch, they shouldn't be allowed to go in the arena, in my mind, at all. Right, if we're gonna say right, there. right, yeah. you know, if you know who they are, if we know who they are, well, yeah, exactly right. So, mm -hmm. and again, Amber may know who they are. Maybe they've been given served uh, a piece of paper to say they can't be anywhere in the vicinity. I don't know, but uh, um, we, we we do know who the kids are. We, you know, it was quite easy for me to find out once I was aware of the situation who they were. Yeah. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, I believe they were suspended from school as well. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and as for, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, I mean, one punished a bunch of kids when, you know, two, two have obviously taken something. And, and, and like I said, I've, I've had the kids messaging me, why aren't you open? We want to come and have lunch. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I understand, like, it, the staff safety there as well. But, I mean, with the two of us and for how busy as it is there, I mean, we've, we've, we get, we've become you know, quite acquainted with these kids. We know them all on a first name basis because it's all the same kids that come on a regular basis. 
these two kids that in particular that did partake in that fight are kids that don't come on a regular basis. So as soon as that was found out, it was something that obviously, you know, they were there with the intent for that to happen. Because like I said, we know them on a first name basis and they were students that don't come on a regular basis. So how often, do we know how often like, they've had issues? Like how big of a headache this is for the guys at the right? The guys complain about, and not just this year. Don't don't think this is anything, you know, with you guys. It, but it's an ongoing issue in the winter time. It's a hangout place, and it becomes a babysitting club for us. For during lunch. Yeah, and it's it creates some problems because they're going off site to get into their fights, right? I would suggest that we invite Amber to have a conversation with us. I don't want to speak on her behalf. I just because the concession is not open doesn't mean that these kids don't have access to the inside of that building. Now we're telling them if you have no business being here, you need to move it along. There's no loitering. And who's telling them that? Our staff is. Staff is. And now they know that, okay, we're not allowed to hang around here. I've been there myself. We've gone. We're have gone for meetings. They always have to, yes. Cause, and at any given time of the day, you have kids that are on spares that will try and come over there. And if they're quiet and there's only a few, it, it usually doesn't create an issue. Like I said, I've seen it myself. I've walked in there, and I've walked in where you've had kids in the lobby that are are swearing and fighting in the lobby, and you tell them to get lost, and they will tell you exactly where you can go. It's just a common place. Kids are going to go wherever they can. Yeah. But there's more people in the evenings, like adults and stuff, so they're a little more hesitant to misbehave. So are they asked to leave in the evenings as well then? If they're creating issues, they would be. But at lunchtime, they're asked to leave due to loitering, and there's no purpose of them being if there. If they're fighting, they're asked to lunch. leave. Right now, if there's nothing open there for them to be doing, yeah, I think that, um, and I don't know if we need the resolution or what the process is in this, but I think this lady should be allowed to reopen tomorrow if she wishes. Um, I think if there's fights in the parking lot, our staff has no business getting involved. Yeah. Call the RCMP. That's their job. Um, and, I, and I don't feel it's fair that everybody else is paying the price because of what two people did. But that's not right. So we're not interested yeah. in hearing what, what I think the investigation that, I was? Think I'm just this, asking. I think this agenda has been set for at least two weeks. Um, I think that if Amber had looked at the agenda, then possibly she'd have been here. She doesn't look at the say. agenda. That's okay. our agenda. Regardless, if we're here to make a decision, my decision would be these people are allowed to reopen. Um, if there's any fights in the parking lot, call the RCMP. If there's any fights in the building, call the RCMP. Uh, yeah, the and only, those yeah. two kids. The only concern, and I agree, the only concern is, though, going forward, if we don't have a plan, and our, if we have a fight there tomorrow or the next day and a staff member gets hurt, then we're going to be the ones that are on the line mm -hmm. because we don't have a plan. Um, and I would, I would want my employee, if somebody was getting beaten, to try and stop it. And if they get hit, and now we're, trying, we're saying that, what? But that who is the attendant? We're, we're giving him the duties to, to do it. And I can tell you right now, you will get majority of the students that will go there will be good. But you get kids going there because there are no adults supervising. They don't know who they are. And they'll use this to go there to plot the next fight. And I do it all day long. Or used to do it all day long. So that's why they go to the arena. Is because there is no one there that knows what they're up to. And then they cause issues. And then we, the 95% of the people get to, you know, we're trying to figure out how to deal with the other 5%. So I, that's for workplace health and safety, I would be worried about the attendant and what message are we sending to him or her, whoever's there. We really don't care. Sorry you got punched. Just make sure you move faster next time in the lobby if you get hit. But I, but I agree, I agree with, that, with that, Trevor. But the thing is, how, how much risk is it to our employee to dial 911? Yeah. Right. But right. he shouldn't, he shouldn't hit. be getting involved. But, but he shouldn't be getting involved. No. Right. That's not their role, That's unless we're going to provide them with... with a bar. I mean, you don't physically get involved. You phone the RCMP if you have a fight that breaks out. You try to use your words and talk to them and try to get them to leave. If they're not responding quick enough, the wife or somebody else is already on the phone and you're calling RCMP and you're letting them know what's going on. If the fight breaks out and gets ugly, 
you're responding to the RCMP and it's up to them to get there in a timely manner because they're the ones that are supposed to be looking after basically our staff, our public, and everybody else, either inside or outside the building that is being threatened by violence. So if we're t you're telling me that we're going to tell our attendant that if you see a 12-year-old being assaulted by another 12-year-old, leave it alone, wait till the police show up. No, what we have to tell guys is that you use your common sense, but don't get right. physical. And that's what happened. That's well, exactly what happened. He got in between. No, but what, what happened, but what we have, if we're asking our employees to get involved in altercations and to break up fights, then they have to have training on that. Yeah, you have to have a good policy on no, it. I agree. No, they have to have more of a policy. You no, but you have to have something. Right now we have No, but if you have a, what I'm saying is that if you're asking somebody to do something, they have to be trained in how to do that. Yeah. And so if I feel comfortable enough to say there's two 12-year-olds fighting and I'm going to go and push them apart and say smart enough, be a little shit, and move them apart, and one of the kids slaps me or something, I think my risk of injury is probably lower than if I've seen two adults fighting and I, and I expect my attendants to go and get involved in that. That's a completely different thing. Yeah. So. I agree with Trevor. We can't ask our employees to do anything they feel that unsafe to them. And that's what we should be telling them all the time. If you're not comfortable with it, you phone the RCMP. We're not expecting you to do anything more than what you feel comfortable of doing and you feel that you can safely do it. Now, the other thing I was going to ask Shauna is that, is that is there something, you know, we have this kind of heightened awareness of what's going on there. Is there something else that she could do over the next little while where maybe she could bring in somebody extra or they could keep an eye on what's going on out there because we don't want this to happen. We want it to be a happy place where people can walk through and go to the wellness center. Kids can come. It's a great positive hangout. But to think that we're not going to have problems again in the future, whether you have a security guy there or not, it's going to yeah. happen. Maybe, <coughs> maybe the RCMP could come for lunch. Shall I buy up some fries. <laughs> well, it makes sense, though. Right? That, well, that once again, um, uh, my, my conversation where, like I said, you have two to three staff that are there. Um, I mean, between the three of them, I feel you should be able to manage 12 year old. You know, um, there has been times, you know, where, let's say, myself, uh, my dad, and my husband is there at lunchtime. You know, if we see something going on where these kids are running around and, and doing something, obviously, that we feel that they shouldn't. We will definitely step in and say, "Hey, smart up!" You know, it's 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 been done before. You you know, if they're running around, um, and most most times they will listen to us because they know we're the ones that are feeding them every day. So I mean, I guess I, I don't know exactly what it, what to say in regards to, to hiring that additional person on our end. I feel I, I I do feel like it is sort of unnecessary because, like I said, there are already two <coughs> staff that are there. And the staff that are there are mostly sitting in their office for that hour. They're so, not watching any of these kids. They're mostly in that office doing, I don't know what they're doing in the office. But I guess we're not saying to hire somebody else, Oshana, but because we had this last issue and there's awareness over the next little while, if you guys can be aware of that oh, concern. Oh, and sure. that you know, maybe if you could make sure we transfer that message out to these guys that, you know, this place could be, this could happen again. And, but to think that we're not going to have a problem again, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, if yeah. the, and if the problem does happen, there's nothing wrong with you passing the, the name off to Amber and having that person yeah, like I don't have a, we don't have any issues working with you guys, you know, to find a res like resolve this issue. You know, it, it, I don't know if these kids have been banned from the facility already. Or, you know, yeah. I'm not even aware of who they are. Okay. You probably have a better chance. Oh, we I, didn't I, even know that they were suspended from school, okay. or if it was with regards to this incident, or it was something else. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I am like I said, I have the video of, of what happened. I know the kids' names, and I know that they were suspended from school. So for this incident off-site? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, zero tolerance. So you know what I mean? Like it's to me that's that's something that should that should have been the first thing rather than us being closed. You know, I I I, I felt like we should just ban the kids.
told everybody, told, told these other kids, you know what, this is the repercussion so if you guys are doing something like this, be aware of that in the future. And, and, and leave it at that. You, you were aware that there was an incident the day before with different people too, no, correct? Yeah, no. there was another see, incident. Yeah, I, I, we didn't know anything. I literally yeah. just went off the email at it while I was... Not to the extreme the of this, though, yeah. but yeah. 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 Do we yeah. have a policy on the process to ban someone from a town facility? Yeah, we do. We do? Yeah. And does this qualify? Yeah, they were fighting in there. And if we know who those two people are, then why aren't we banning them? Because yeah. we probably didn't know who they were. Call Again, the, couldn't the tell you that. I can't speak for Amber. Can't speak to her. Yeah, for sure. But I'm not going to tell you something yeah. that I'm going to yeah. dream no, up. I right. sooner you hear the actual story than me trying to guess. So consensus, I think, yeah. would be that they're allowed to reopen. Yeah. And what would you like me to tell staff how to move forward? Call nine one one. And don't do anything that they feel. Yeah. Let's put some folks in jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. At any time, no matter what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. But I, I'd like Amber to also meet yeah. with, with them For sure. to make sure they can work together to mm -hmm. and talk to the attendant and say, hey, someone's out listening, find out the name from her, talk to like. And if we have so a clear right. understanding of who the two participants were, then we should be banning them from the facility for 30 days minimum, whatever our yeah. policy is. Because it's not fair that everyone else paid for the acts of two. And that's what a lot of the kids are saying. So it's two fools to ruin it for the rest of Yes. Time. That's not fair. Yeah. 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 Yeah
happened. That's happened. Well, it, but that's important, right? He can't give you any information on what's happened in the future. That's what I'm here for. I'm giving you the uh, the projections and the current. Um, he's going to give you, like his job as the auditor is to verify that what I'm doing is correct. So that's what he's presenting on when it comes to a financial statement. Like, if you want details on something, I know that was Trevor's comment, the details should be coming from me. So if you have questions, I can provide those details. He's going to come in afterwards and tell you, oh yeah, all those details he provided you are correct in the big picture, right? <laughs> are we able just to get the last audit of the financial sheets and make our own chart and just show Absolutely, you can, yeah. And it, if you're comfortable, I'm happy to present some of that stuff to you as well. I think that's um, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And then if we need more after that, yeah. I mean, typically yeah. that's what I would look at. So we get, some audit, we get audited once a year? Yep. You get an annual audit. Yeah. Just an annual. Yep. Yeah. We don't get audited any it, other time. It becomes uh, financially burdensome to uh, audit Often. No, like they just don't show up someday and say... Well, they do come in and they do random testing of transactions and stuff like that. So they do look at some uh, some micro-level stuff as well. It's not just, hey, you know, what have you done? Here's the big picture. Yep, looks good. No, it's, you know, they'll come in, they'll look at transactions, they'll look that we're following procedure for support, for approval, signatures on checks, uh, you know, all that stuff. Um, but it's based on sampling, right? So they're going to look at... Specifics. They'll pull them randomly. They'll pull big transactions. They'll do stuff like that. I'm sure you're familiar with the audit process. Of yeah. The same kind of thing, right? Um, no, I think it's it's important that it would be nice to see the audited financial sheets. Absolutely. The financial uh, up over the last number of years, and then you can really just look at yep, and year to year to year to year and see the difference. In so all these all this information is available yeah. on our website. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I can absolutely put together um, like a compressed um, version to give you an idea what to look at. Um, I guess the angle here is with somebody outside of the organization, he can give you advice on how to keep uh, your financial officer in check uh, so he's not running a lock. I think you know what, maybe in a year's time this would be a little bit more. I know I know where you're coming from, but you know we're. We're trying to do our budget, but we're not even up to date on what we're supposed to be right now. We haven't done uh, a budget together as a group, so people probably don't have a good handle on, you know, what is in each department. This is the amount of money. This is what it's for. This is, and now to go look at trends or over the last four years would be like, oh, you know, everything. And then we're right into budget time, and it would be like, okay, what am I? That is that information supposed to help me going forward? I, I, I would just, yeah. Anyway, you know where I stand on that one anyway, so not right now. So the but consensus is no? No. Okay. Lakefront lots. So in our agreement right now, we have where you can request an extension for $1,000 to get a year extension. So the questions come up several times to Jen saying if it's denied, are they going to get their $1,000 back? Or is it only going to be where they're paying the thousand dollars if their extension gets approved? <coughs> what was the, the agreement? Is that clear. Clear. The agreement isn't clear. The intent, I think, was is if you're going to hold it up another year, then it's going to cost you a thousand dollars. I think that was the intent. Yeah. So I would personally think, and my recommendation would be, we would consider the request, and if we do agree that yes, we'll do it, then they should pay the thousand dollars. If we say no, why are we going to make them pay it? We just take the land back. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. So $1,000 only if approved? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that was the intent of the original agreement, then that's what we should stick to. Why wouldn't it be approved? You just said no to one. No, I said no to a sale. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't we grant someone an extension? Say if um, someone had a property for two years and did absolutely nothing. You haven't really, yeah. You haven't You're really half, shown oh, that you were okay. doing anything. So that's okay. I'm only looking at a portion. But it doesn't yeah. take a year yeah. to the house, though. Like, but we're saying if you've done nothing, you didn't even clear. Right. Like, if you've already put a foundation in, I don't know why we would say no, no, no. So this is just in reference to the lake lots alone, and not yeah. the. That's correct. Okay, so not yeah. the in-town yeah. lots. No. Okay. Okay. The in town lots had a thousand dollars, didn't it? Where they can extend it for any, yeah, for that thousand dollars sale, yeah. not yes. any other lots. No, but we mm -hmm. had a thousand dollar lot sales in town. Yes, but this is just in reference to the 
Lakefront. No, the no, it's both. All the lots that were sold for the thousand dollars that signed that agreement. Yeah. In any agreement we have moving forward, we're looking at the thousand dollar. Like if we turned around and sold for whatever amount, I recall that the previous council had said a thousand dollars if you're extending anything. Right, but in this it says like what is the issue? It says one year extension request for building at the at lake front lots. lots. It doesn't reference the ones in it town. Also Sorry, that was town. my mistake. It was all okay. the lots. Yeah, that's my mistake. I think it's because the majority of the ones are asking about are lake lots. So, so that's why I'm asking my question is that if they're a month away from the in town lot and they haven't did anything. That doesn't mean that you can't get a house built within three months. If so, somebody could be denied if they're, I don't know, like 22 months in, but they can still get it done because they don't have to do the clearing. So, do they have one year or two years to build? Two, two years to build. If you require an extension, it'll cost you a thousand dollars to extend it one more year. Third year. Yeah. Okay. But two years but to lock up stage, right? Yeah. Case no, case. no, two years to nothing. Just yeah. two years to lock up stage. Yeah, lock up is all done. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's the same for in town and out of town. Mm -hmm. Regardless if they're okay, got it. So we agree then it would only be the thousand dollar payment if approved? Yeah. Okay. The building inspector for the RM of Kelsey. This has kind of been a discussion that we've had for the last little while, and it was always our intent to train our building inspector to provide those services. I'm recommending we look at entering into a uh, agreement with the RM of Kelsey with similar fees as it relates to the OFC. The OFC, and it's based on per capita, and Jen, you would confirm today that it was approximately $10,000 is the base That's fee they pay. And then any building permit fees, we would collect, and we would retain those fees. Does, does, does our guy have time? I, I didn't think he had any extra time. Does he have time? I think that was always his intent, is to continue. It was my understanding, yes. So, so he has time in his yeah. schedule right now to do this as well? Yeah, he was actually going to be taking a proposal to them, and they approached us. I think he was waiting to get some of his <coughs> additional classifications. So he's totally classified. He's, he has, what was it, part time, part time? Part time. Part time? Yeah. So that's yes. any residential structure, right? Mm -hmm. No commercial. No commercial. And it's, I think, so many square feet. Yeah. Yeah. He's got and the time and, and, and to do it. Why not? Oh. Jerry said it would probably be maybe six a year. Six yeah. or seven. They don't have many. Yeah. So. But is, <coughs> this may have not happen, but is he going to say, you've added this onto my workload, so now I'm going to request an additional payment? For this? Everybody can say that. It's whatever. Well, I know, but like if we say, yeah, you can go ahead and do this, and then he uh, turns back in uh, six months' time, whatever, and says, uh, yeah, I want to put a proposal in for a raise because of this additional thing, we can deny it. I know mm -hmm. that. It's just a thought. That's all that's in my head. But and you, you talked to him about it, right? In the past, um, we have. Yeah. So yeah. He didn't, you said he had a proposal ready to go? Well, he was preparing. Like, he said that he just needed the time uh -huh. to prepare and go to them with it. But they came to us first. So, so it was before we start even preparing agreements and stuff and yeah. getting excited. Could we, are we yeah. even interested? Could we defer it a month? And can we ask Randy to come to the next meeting yeah. and explain to us how he would handle it? I think we have the Office of the Fire Commissioner coming up in January. I don't yeah. 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 And I think we should ask them That's if fire. they're willing to release fire. that mm -hmm. to us. Sure. Yeah. You know? I, I would like a little more from Randy, just on how he yeah. plans to handle this. Issue sheet. Um, Samuel Museum, board appointments. 
So it's basically appointing museum board members. Um, it's council's responsibility to appoint. They recommend. So they're asking for the reappointment of Michael Wyman, Faye Kabelka, Trent Allen um, for a two-year period being to December 31st, 2020. So we would require a resolution. Discussion? I don't know about Trent Allen. I'm right. <laughs> 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 um, thinking he's all right. Now, he's I'm not sure about that guy. <laughs> uh, okay, the library board. The library board would like to set up a meeting with council to come and get a presentation and also to do a tour of the building. So when would we like to look at that? Or do you want us to set up like the Saturdays because we still have to finish the fire department and we still need to go through recreation and we still need to go through the airport. Do you want it as to include it in that rotation? Saturdays? Okay. In January? I don't know if they're open Sunday. No idea. The library. The library. Is that right? I'm pretty sure they know. She got there. I think at the meeting, um, Saturday would have, was an option. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think it was. Whether they're they're open or not, I believe somebody would be willing to not shouldn't speak for them, but I'm pretty sure. Payroll and accounts. So we would require a resolution um, for pay period 24 and 25 in the amount of 104,904.59, general checks of 1.920,7731, uh, and EFTs in 153 to 725.81 for a total of 2,178,707.71. Um, the reporting hasn't changed. Graham is working on some other different stuff, so I did not make that a priority for him. That is forthcoming. Um, Graham, you said you would be willing to sit down with a few members to kind of hash out what kind of a report <coughs> would be most beneficial. Yeah, well, sorry, I thought you were talking about the financial report. Um, come on, come on. Uh, for this one, there was a uh, spreadsheet I was able to produce that showed all the details making up each check. Mm -hmm. and in some cases, that ended up just being PO numbers. But for the most part, I would say, you know, um, you know gloves for X area or whatever, and it, it had a little more explanation as to each invoice, and then uh, <coughs> and summarize into what the total check was. It was it was long. It was I think this one was 27 pages, but it matched up against <coughs> this single page or double page report you guys have. So potentially you could use that as the basis, and then look at the longer report if you have concerns or questions. You can kind of see what the breakdown mm -hmm. is. Is that maybe something, that, that, something that you would that prefer he circulates so that you have an idea of what? Well, because how do we ask questions of some of that stuff? Like, when would we do that? If mm -hmm. You have usually the checklisting ahead of time, and that's what we've done in the past. No, I know. So do we wait for this meeting, or do we start? We have, no, like, we're just out of curiosity of how, you, how certain things are spent. Because you know, like I don't, some vendors I've never heard about before, or understanding, you know, like, Collins Barrow is why you would pay them $11,000. It's so obvious. So what I, and generally, all I've been doing is I'm giving you the top heavy ones, right? So it, I can continue with that right away too. But I, I understand what you're saying. But usually, when the agenda is online and if there's questions, members call in and and ask the questions or come and look through the checks. Well, I don't want to look through the checks. I'm just trying to get calibrated to what the spend mm -hmm. is. That's all. From a procedural standpoint, looking at this register, um, it, would it be possible? And it'd be a little extra work for you. But I see a check in there to a company I own and a company that Carrie is involved with. So I think technically we're not even supposed to be involved in this discussion, even though I've already received the check. So would it be possible to pull out those checks and set them aside so we can at least ask questions or carry on with this? Because you know clearly we we're getting paid. Good, it's in your disclosure form. Yeah, that covers. You. Yeah. But and can I vote to pay myself? No. Yeah, but you approve your indemnities. We approve that by bylaw. We approve this by resolutions. But our indemnities are our indemnities, Set. right? This is actual businesses that Carrie and I own separately, and we're both receiving a check here. And I think technically we're not supposed not to be involved. In it's in if it's in her Jake's. Mm. I don't know. 
poison. Or? But then that, that does I think, that I mean think the defense here would be that you're proving the checks as a whole, not individual checks. And it's stuff that we've already done. It's I'm in not. our jobs. We Could we find out? Could you guys yeah. get an official I'm ruling sure. on that? Right? Yeah. Because if, like, again, you know. I mean, regardless, we would still circulate this list. You would yeah. still be able to see it, right? Uh, are you interested yeah, in seeing the, the greater detail as well? Or is that something that it would be good to know at least which department. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so, and I'm, mm -hmm. You're making some assumptions, right? I see this one, North Fringe Industrial Technologies, 15000 bucks. I'm guessing that's public works? Well, I know that's that the, the rental pump, of the pump. But what I was going to ask about that is how much did we actually spend on that pump job? Hundred and sixty thousand. No. Like in that in that replacement pump. How much money was spent managing that failure? From the time that it like the total cost of that activity. What was it? It's not even over yet. We still have it. You still have the pump. Still out there? The pump is sent back. Oh, it's the piping we have. The piping? Yeah, the piping is still there, but some of it has gone back. This stuff we're not paying for. So. But it would be interesting to, like, so when I look at those things, is like, you know, what, what those activities are costing. Yeah. And I mean, if you were curious about something that was spanning multiple periods, I mean, I would have to pull that information mm -hmm. based on a request. It wouldn't be apparent in the checklisting you're approving, right? Um, I think that's what we were talking about before, Graham, is that does that, does those, do those things get charged to one code? Like when you have, if that cost of that failure is $200,000, say, I don't know how much it is, but say $200,000, whoever is managing that, do they have the authority to spend that much money for that? Is it, an, is it a classified as a project? Or? You're approving all the transactions. That's, so it's, it's not an authority thing. Like you're, you're looking at what the payments are, the explanation comes behind it. Um, I know what you're saying. Um, that's my, not technically accurate. I, I don't think I that's, 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 that's not technically accurate. accurate. No, no, but no. If I don't see it, I only see it in bytes. Yeah. I well, don't even know what the You're approving each transaction, that is accurate. No, 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 no. Because these checks have been issued. Yeah. I didn't approve it. You're approving it now, if you do. I, maybe in two weeks. Okay. I didn't technically approve that you spent 15000 with that company. I didn't approve that. No, that should be based on policy, right? Whether well, what, it should, budget be, what it should be based on is project cost, and Sam should be doing that. And and when he has that project, like it's like that is a major project, and then it should be like project one forty three, and then he keeps a kind of a running total along with you as to yeah. what's being spent. I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm saying is uh, there's there's inherent limitations in the general ledger based on. Uh, the format and the template we try and meet for the financial plan template for the province. So we don't want to stray too far from that template or it just creates a lot of work. Um, we're, not saying, we're not saying this should change. No, no, I, no I, and I, I get what you're saying. And I, I like what you're saying because it, it's not adding more burden to me. Because exactly. That's, that's well, the well, yeah. how can how can we do anything? Like we sit here, six of us or seven, eight of us, and we say, well, what did that project cost? Nobody can give us an answer. And and like I said, with with the um, with the direction of council, knowing what your questions are, I bet you myself and Sam could provide those um. answers for you. Um, I don't know that we're going to anticipate all your questions to provide you answers beforehand. Um, in some cases, maybe we can. Well, I, I know it's going to be a learning curve for everybody in every department to start to yep. keep track of what things are costing, yep. you know, instead of just having a general budget. But th this is like a... I know what you're saying. Okay, you want to say, like say this is an emergency thing that we could go back to the province and say, we want to try and get emergency funding for this. I get what you're saying. I and we have. I think we have a policy with our capital projects that we track everything separately, and uh, we can kind of tie it all together and show. So, what would you classify a capital project? Well, the rose would be a capital project. Typically, no, like, typically, capital is something that you're generating um, an asset out of, right? You're you're bettering something. You're making. In this case, this is we're not improving uh, 
it's more of a uh, repairs and maintenance. Repairs and yeah. maintenance. Yeah. It's it's a major spend, yeah. But it's a major yeah. spending. Yeah. No, and, and no, sorry, I'm not going in that yeah. direction. I'm just saying that is our policy with capital. If if you prefer to have a policy that ties to uh, bigger issues like this, then maybe well, more costly issues that kind of can be lumped together into one thing. In, in um, my previous employment, sure. we had minor capital projects, which is anything under hundred thousand dollars. Major capital projects was anything over hundred thousand dollars. Did you know what those costs were going to be for the minor before they were completed? You had to do your homework. Sure, you sure. had to do it up. You had to forecast what your costs were. I mean, going but, to be. But, but in this case, I mean, we just asked the question, and he'll provide it. That's what we'll just, all, all we got to do is say how much did the whole thing cost? Sit with Sam and figure it out. Because yeah. I'm sure it started with, oh my God, we need to buy the pump. Oh, we need some more holes. Oh, we need this. Oh my God, look, we need to go with this. That pump doesn't work now. Get the other pump well, out. We need it right away because if we don't do it, everything's gonna go. Well, it's, it's it's so true. Yeah, like, an emergency. Right, right. Yeah. emergency. Yeah. So at least but, then we. But, but an emergency is today. Four months is no longer an emergency. That 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 window closed. Um, so, I, and I understand the whole municipal financing, and I get it. But so if we approve the, somebody's budget for whatever amount it is, the assumption is that we're spending money from that person's budget, right? So if there was something on here that said this is part of maintenance project whatever, then we know at least we've approved that budget already. But there is nothing in here that provides any support that says this is approved budget money. There's nothing in here that says that. And uh, special emergency projects like spending all that money on those pumps, that should be tagged separately. Exactly. That should be completely separate because that wasn't in anybody's budget. That's, that's an emergency above and beyond spending that we, and I don't believe the previous council, approved. It was just done. And I don't think that's right. So, in my opinion, we need to get some work done on these statements. But Graham, you could do a vendor listing, like if you just put in one vendor. But that's not answering the question, because you have there, multiple there vendors. No, that's um, not the question I'm asking, like, though. I'm like asking if a search can be done on one particular vendor. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, so to get the answer that you were looking for, it would be just, I, I don't think you're right here. I said, I don't want to speak for what Herb's saying either. Like, if, you, if you're looking to have identified, may identify items that may be outside of the scope of the budget, that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, my concern more with, with these kinds of reports is that this is a standard report that the software company says, this is all you need to provide. Now, to get more out of it, like sometimes this, you know, a square peg in a round hole and you're trying to make it work. Um, this other report I have is a little more detailed. It doesn't provide everything. Um, is there, like my concern is that well, I want to supply you guys with everything you want. I also don't want to create a situation where I'm spending all my time building reports and no, not exactly. able to spend the time looking at the data. So I, I'm trying to weigh those two things together and I, mm -hmm. I don't want to be caught too far on one side. I want to do something that's sustainable over the long term that I can continue to supply to you that's going to meet your needs and that I can do if it's unrealistic. There, there needs to be some way that, that these are identified as being part of somebody's budget that we approve when we approve the financial plan. Because you so don't. You're not paid first and then bring it to the attention. Yeah. Well, and if if if, uh, if we know that uh, Maxim truck and trailer is part of somebody's maintenance budget, then we know at least we're, that we approved it back in February or March, whatever that is, right? There, there has to be a way so we have some comfort. We just don't know. And again, like I said, these checks have been issued. It's usually taxes. Taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a lot of bills. What's the pod dance fund? <coughs> Yes, I right. yeah, I looked at the yeah. Yeah. Can I go through some of the bigger ones we have here to just kind of give you an idea? Sure. So we had Collinsboro was 11,076.83 was the accounting service for our audit. 
Kelsey School Division for 215887 was education levy. North Fringe was the pump rental in the amount of 15 to a 145. So those rentals are done on yesterday, right? I'm sorry, yes. You said those rentals are all complete now? That's yes, the pump is sent back and the and the things that are sitting here we're not getting charged we're with. It was what I was yeah. told. Um, Minister of Finance, 718079. That is our debenture payments for the year. Um, Fanset construction for 175, 57104. That's the, f I, that should be final payment, I imagine, Graham, or is there one more for the rows? one payment and then there's an additional payment for some rental fees. Okay, so that we're almost for, done, LaRose. That was LaRose, right? LaRose, yeah. Simcoe Refrigeration, that was with our um, Brian and doing the work at the rink. Kelsey School Division, again, there's a 16,785.12 levy. Morgan Fuels was 20,000, oops. 20,599 in fuels for airport fuel. In Sitco, that's a big bill, but that's our bills for winter. What about mid continental pump supply for $19,000? That's probably the pump that was just sent back. Yeah, that's the new pump. The, the brand new one? I think so. Is, it not? is that the one that they were sending out to play? The rental was. Because there's a second one, too. No, the rental was another company, wasn't it? North Fringe, or North Fringe, that yeah, would be the rental. That's the rental. So mid-continental pump supply would be the... I know we've doubled them on the repairs as well, because mm -hmm. they also do repairs. I think they supplied the new one and did the repairs. So I'm not sure offhand. Uh, I'd have to... She could probably pull the details. And the Paw Dad's fund? That's the recreation. And I think what they do is they pay into another account. I'll go grab that one with Jen, too. Pardon me? Denise Duncan, is she an employee? Yeah, she teaches, um, yeah, in recreation. What is she? It's not yoga. What yoga. is that other one? Is it yoga? yoga? She does all kinds yeah. of things. Oh, okay. So we have contracts that we pay for that. It's repair. The Continental Pump is repair to Peerless Vertical Turbine Pump. So to the depot pump? Yep. Sorry, and there was the dance one. What check number? Sorry. Uh, triple two nineteen. So both pumps are in the ground now. I don't know if that second pump is here yet, Graham. I don't think it is. Really? Funds collected for recital costumes. So would it just been a payment for the parents buying the costumes to it? Oh. $184, $184 costumes at $30. So that would have been for the so dance chan program. Yeah, so chances are Kelsey Rec collected the money and then they paid, and then they paid it. Yeah. at any given time before a meeting, this is all in the meeting stuff. If you ever want to come and look at it, if you have questions with it. So does Patty Jean, is she hired on a contract? Or yeah, she gets she's a contract. Yeah, she's a contract. She's a recreation person there. But she, is she the yeah, dance lady? She's yeah. the dance instructor. So, so for the dance stuff, though? Yeah. So she just gets paid a... Flat rate. Here's yeah. what her fee is she's for. not an employee. Okay. No matter, no matter how many dancers she has. Correct. When did that go that way? Because before they, they were just renting the space, were they not? We always or pay for a dance instructor, and that's pretty much what she is. Like we pay for, like again, Zumba lady, like because we don't have no, the people you, to do it. But that's not always the way it was, because there was kids doing it before, and they certainly they weren't making. I'm not. I'm not saying. I don't recall. I, sorry, I, I yeah, don't there was, know. She, I'm just wondering, like the thirty-seven hundred dollars. That's so that doesn't matter. She'll make thirty-seven hundred dollars whether she has a hundred kids or. Just I would have so to ask Amber what her contract is. Okay. I'm just no, for sure. kind of... So we pay the dance instructor and the kids pay... Us. Us. We pay them to provide the service for us. Okay. 
Any other questions? Good discussion. <laughs> She's triple two, one's a 37. This is from November 26th to December 10th. It was 41, 58 classes. It doesn't say how many kids were in it, but it was 58 classes. Well, she was paid per class. Yeah. So it would depend on probably your enrollment, how many kids you have, and how many classes you would have to have. It's very popular. It's actually one of our better programs. Right, the great program is the lineup for that one. We went all the way around the gym and, yeah, none of the other person that does, the, does the, does the, like, do those programs, like, do they pay for themselves? Like, are, like, pay for these people to instructor kind of thing? Most oh, yeah. of them do, yeah. It was very rare that you have the programs that don't pay for themselves. And then they fill a slot. Right? Yeah, yeah, baseball's another one that's... Awesome. So no, no, it's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions on the checks for tonight, fellas? Gary? No? Oh. He, uh, I just got one. The, the brandy's there. Uh, is that, like, how, I thought we have, we, there's one for 840 and there's another one way up here for, for that might maybe at your brandy checks. Yeah, there's 3,000, another 3,000. Know, 3, yeah. So what, what are they pumping? Because we've got our own. Let's, sorry, I'm just getting under look. Uh, there might shack. be air, yeah. There, there might be airport. Fish uh, shack, pump out, bag, yeah, shaw, manhole, clean out. Fish shack, pump out, fish shack, pump out, manhole, clean out. That pump out at the fish shack is very costly for getting nothing in return. It's $300 every time mm. we pump it out. 300 bucks? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people that don't, uh, that just cruise through? Oh, that every time, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, 50, it's $57 every pump out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that was one, two, three, four, five. Five pump outs. Do you know how many campers from the lake will actually do that? Will come and pump out here? Do we get a campground over here at the lake grounds? Mm -mm. Because that's where most of them are pumping out. Yep. It's, it's travel. Oh, where people else would travel go? through. Yep. There's lots of people travel through. And they stop it and they dump it. For free. And we pay for it. Yeah. The same thing out of clear water when we have a check for the They come off the road, they dump, and they go. Is there another way to get the user paid? We've brought it up in the past to bring, like, we've brought it to the table saying, even if we lock it and have a key here and charge a deposit, and when you bring the key back or whatever, like to make sure that we get what our key back and that you pay. What is the actual cost of just that pumping station free one? Uh, yeah, I think she said 50 bucks. 50 bucks, bucks a time. Well, how much is it for you? Well, it's 37 plus eight, 4,500 bucks, and that includes the fish and... Yeah, so how much, if, if I'm trying to understand the cost to operate that one pump out, how much is it for you? I would have to look because that's, yeah, I'd be so guessing. Then, I mean, it's hard to say that's no good for us. I mean, it might, the, the guy might be spending most of his time somewhere else. Maybe it is a good public relations type of thing for our community where they stop there and then they That was pretty the reason why council said we did that. Yeah. ID decide to stay at the hotel overnight now. And if it's, if it's not costing, you know, if it's only a couple thousand bucks a year and, and the rest of the time he's spending at that one pump out station because there's a, Mechanical issue. Budget time, we'll get to bring back all yes. this again. <laughs> okay, the financial report to October. Graham, do you want to comment on this? You've made some very good highlights on the right hand side. 
Um, you'd outline some of the revenues that were up higher, and we talked about it earlier. It was there was really nothing that stood out? It was a normal. Has everybody had a chance to look through this? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Is there anything that just blows your mind? Do you have any questions at all? Public like, works. Public yep. works. Surprisingly low. Yeah. Now I don't know because I haven't been here long enough to know if this is just because uh, the costs are leveraged to the last two months of the year and we're not seeing it yet, or if uh, some because they share resources with the utility, sometimes the utility costs absorb the difference. Um, nothing looks really weird. It just looks low. So the variance we may have over budgeted. The variance of 467, that's on the total for the entire year. Total for the year. Yeah. So I did try and, uh, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. I could project it over months the same way. Um, I thought about doing that, and I decided it didn't make sense based on the time I had to do that. I did try and give you a little bit of an idea where we were looking at at the end of the year to include where we started or we ended in October, plus some of the bigger items I know are missing. So I, uh, you know, we said we have a... 23 or 2.3 million dollars surplus right now in October. But we're looking at you know 1.3 million policing costs that haven't been paid yet, based on our budget estimate. Uh, we're also looking at some operating costs, some incidental revenue for user fees. Uh, Added a little bit of error in there in case I'm off on something wildly, and we're you know we're not too far off from the mark. Um, utility may be a different story based on where we are. Pumps and how long we had problems, but uh, it's difficult to say. And there was no big expenses or no big projects that we identified that were outstanding that we could. No, I, you know, I'm looking at this. Most of this is business as usual. I mean, the airport seems to be driving big numbers. I think we need to start adjusting our budget to match. Um, the uh, the museum saw a little bit of a surplus in their revenue. They spent it. It was. Uh, extra grant money for specific purposes she went out of her way to get that's great it's good to see um, the uh, the revenue on the KRC and on the side is a little low um, maybe that's over budgeting they tend to be pretty we tend to be really strict on the budgets so we're always trying to reduce the town's input in there but sometimes that it overestimates the amount of money she's going to generate from user fees and I'm wondering if that's what this is here um, most of the big figures are accounted for. It's really just user fees at this point. So I think we're going to run a little short there, but that's not really a new story. Um, the margin's closer than it has been. I think some of that's just adjusting our budget numbers to realistic amounts. The, uh, all that money we spent on pump rentals and such, where would that show up in here? Greg? That's in the utility. That's all oh, it's in utility? Okay. Yeah. So KRC revenue, just so I understand, so KRC revenue, they're bringing in, so is it the 604 and the 420? So like so the they budgeted one. to bring in 604, 491. Yeah. And we're currently at about 500. Now that discludes the town grant, because I don't think it's appropriate to put that in there. Yeah, so then, but their, the KRC expenses then, is that the 1.3? Correct. Okay. Yeah. It always costs us money. Like this is yeah, 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 this yeah. isn't a, a money making enterprise. But then the wellness center also costs us money. But not as much. But not as much. Well it's a smaller facility, right? Yeah. I mean obviously we'll go through a lot of these details during budget time. It's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be <coughs> stuff. So we should have a surplus. Everything works out great. And it's a small surplus, which is, I know people get a little sidetracked with that. A small surplus isn't a bad thing because you know that you've collected to what you were supposed to. <clears throat> when you have a large surplus, that's not exactly good to the ratepayer because you charge them that and you, you ended up banking it for the next year. So being close to your to that mark is very good. But uh, you're not year to year. You're never going to get that zero mark. You're going to be over. You're going to be under. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you're not too far either way, and hopefully, it balances out over the long term, right? 
But guessing that that pumping job was probably one hundred and fifty or sixty thousand dollars. I suspect we're going to have a deficit. A and utility, yes. So that's not factored into that operations model. Okay. Utilities reported separately, and okay. uh, which is good because utility is always what kills us. It has, and so this year we did raise the rates for utility based on some of the problems and the infrastructure problems we foresee in the future. Um, historically, we've always kind of had a loss on on our, uh, our utility. Um, the rates were a big problem. Hopefully. In 2019, pending no other problems, we start to see some of that money turn around. Um, I know that I've seen other financials from other um, municipalities where utilities make them. Now, I don't know if that's, I mean, I know our utility costs, a lot of people consider them high already. Any other questions on the statement? No? Okie dokie, uh, Municipal Justice Advisory Committee. So AMM is looking for an elected official from this area to represent the Northern District and municipalities by sitting on the um, Provincial Municipal Justice Advisory Committee. I understand, Larry, that you wanted to put your name forward on this committee? Yes, I did. Oh, so we would require a resolution if council is in favor of that? Well done, Larry. Sorry. I also, before we close, um, I know you had mentioned about not being involved in the coalition, but I need to let them know this because on January 10th, I have a Winnipeg meeting. I established the amount of coalition, and I would like to finish up that project. And in February, I have the federal one, and that's no cost to the town except my time away. They pay all the expenses. But I need to let them know. You guys got any thoughts? Refresh my memory on what the coalition has been. The coalition is the money that we got from the federal government to assist with dealing with the indigenous population in our community. If this is something council wishes to not proceed with, then I think we need to let them know and give them back their money and we quit advertising. Can't we farm this out? Like, I, I don't, I, I get it, right? But is this really what we're supposed to be doing right now? Like, It's helping us in our community. That's so why they farmed it to us as the municipality. How is this different from what the Paw Family Resource Center people did a couple of years ago? And why, why don't we have some of these social agencies involved? Because it's not that I'm opposed to the idea, but I'm not really sure that's, that's what you should be doing. Bringing them into that. That's why, as you can see in that yeah. group, we had a dynamic of those groups to come in. Yeah. So how much money do you mean? This was $74,000 that uh, they're paying for the coalition for us okay. to work in dealing with programs and coming up. We know that we have a high indigenous population in our community. Yeah. So this money is to identify yeah. how we can work better and integrate into the community together. Oh, this is separate from, the, 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 from that position. It's pretty much what it's for, is for that person in that, that position. We've tried for three months and can't fill that position. It's been four months. It's not like it's horrible money. I even asked at the last coalition money if anybody knew. You know what I would do? I would get the groups together and decide in uh, whether it's healthcare or education and say, agree amongst that group to say which person you need, whether it's a social worker to work with uh, students that are high risk, whether it's an addictions counselor, whether it's someone to go towards paying someone for a mental health worker, and that's what the community would need. And I think you'd be getting the same people. I mean, it's... I, I. It's kind of the way this works is we were given money to hire someone that is doing some of the work that we're doing right now. It's still under our umbrella, but it's someone that sets up these meetings with all the groups you're talking about. And that's been us up until now. But I guess, what, 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 so your mission is to do what with the groups? The mission is to identify the issue, issues in our community with the Indigenous population and try and integrate them into our community. We know they're here, we know there are issues. So the federal government is giving us money 
to come up with a plan on how we're going to deal with this moving forward. Yeah. The federal coalition that I'm with... The, I, and I, guess, <coughs> I guess all the research out there shows whatever plan you do for everybody works best for all your little pockets of group. So if you go the reverse, you decide to help out the Ukrainian population, mm -hmm. and I'm specifically going to pick out what's, what's up, why the Ukrainians are blending with whoever, then that won't work. But if you do the bigger, the bigger thing, that works for everybody, you will get that group. So what I'm getting at is that if it's the, they need the mental health part of it, and Aboriginals need mental health. Like at schools right now in our community, it's whether you're Aboriginal, white, Ukrainian, everybody needs mental health, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's addictions, the same thing. Whether it's, you name it, you could justify it that it's giving specific help to Aboriginals, but you're giving help to everybody. And then, because who are you going to find? Who are gonna, you're but gonna we have find those groups at the table, and in this particular what case, I, what they're I'm giving saying, us money for that. But what I'm saying is that you can, so how many mental health workers do we have in the PAW? I can tell you. Uh, two. M maybe two uh, at the point. How many other addictions workers do we have in, in town? Mm -hmm. well, one or two, right? How many, so what You're so, talking to the choir. Like, yes. by all means, if you guys don't want to proceed with that, no, no, that's okay. No, what I'm saying is, is that if you met with those, those stakeholders and said, look, this is what we have. We have 70 some odd thousand dollars. Where do you best see us putting the money? Rather than meeting every week and justify a, a social worker for the schools, or a social worker for, I, I don't know, like uh, for the hospital, something that way then they're doing something, you're kind of getting some of your initiative at the same time. Because who, because meeting every month. In fairness, I think what I need to do is give you guys all the information and show you the groups that are already at the table. But I know what your group sometimes. So what I'm saying but is those are the people that you're referring to. Like when you're saying the social worker, we've got someone from the hospital that's going to... Uh, well, I know, I know that. But what I'm saying is that they're all overworked and underpaid as it is. Mm -hmm. So if you throw another person in the trenches, then you might... It's like hospitals. Let's go, let's go meet with the doctors and find out why we can't get any doctors here. So let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about why we know why we can't get any doctors here. But now we're trying to get more doctors here because we're throwing money... To mm -hmm. see if we can get more doctors to come here. So, I guess, what is your suggestion? Is what I'm asking. Is what I'm suggesting is that you meet with the same, all the people at your table. Yeah. And you suggest what position could we, if you're allowed, to take that seventy some odd thousand dollars in all of the organizations that are there. Where could we put it to hire a specific person, whether it's seventy thousand dollars to go to a social worker for this organization that specifically could look at these issues within the community. See, and the $70,000 is to get that person and not me to put I know, forward all that. I know, yes. but what I'm saying They're is... They're not going to give you $70,000 to hire a social worker, if that's what you're asking. Okay, that's exactly what yeah, I'm Yeah, that's not part of their so program. The okay. Okay. So in this coalition... Sorry, yeah. it took a while because I didn't no, know where it was no. going. I, that's my apology. So in this coalition, we got this money for this yeah. position. So mm -hmm. once this person becomes in the community, if we do hire somebody, now, do they gather all the troops yes. and figure something out and then did they do a presentation to I guess the federal government for funding to correct whatever. Correct yeah, and part money. of this Manitoba one that we've established is for us to go right now all we're getting is money from the feds. Exactly. So our Manitoba coalition is working with the province of Manitoba mm -hmm. government for them to throw some money into this. At our federal level we're ensuring that that money is going to continue to be there because what they've done in the past is they've got all these programs going and then walked away and said it's the municipality's yeah, exactly. responsibility. But see, I think but we got to be more creative. For example, so if you went to the RCMP and said, look, what if we hired some sort of a, call it a community constable, aboriginal, <laughs> such and such, <laughs> well, yeah, but they, but they, they don't. They don't have a, the, the, actually the person's gone back and they could work to kind of get the groups together and they could also work with our high risk aboriginal youth or whatever, doing some stuff and we could, I, you know what I mean? They could also fire a report uh, uh, once a month on something, but, they're, but they have a supervisor they're working for the RCMP. Like, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, 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 that's, yeah. But as soon as the 70000 you have now, as soon as you find somebody yeah. that that money is meant for, you go like this. I'm done. She's yeah. done. Yeah. So they, so that's that what we're person. trying to do. So the current plan is, and, and I like Trevor's idea, so the current plan is, is go out and find somebody to do, do Trevor's plan. 
Yeah. yeah. That's the whole idea of the money. Yeah. That's what that money is of, for. Instead of doing that, skip that step and just go to those people now and say, hey, here's what you got, but we can't do that, you're saying. No. You can't go and hire yeah. that one specific person with that yeah. money. Yeah. It's hiring that person to coordinate that with your group. Yeah. See, and, 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 and more money. So, yes. Yeah. So, again, if I may. Um, so it's I'm not opposed to the coalition idea. I'm, I'm not. I, there's there's merit to it. My issue is uh, I've been the mayor for two months and I feel like I've got almost nothing done because things are taking so long. There's such a gap between meeting dates. The meetings are now four hours long, um, and, and things are taking so long. In January. We're going to be up to our armpits in getting ready for this year's budget, right? There is going to be a lot to do. There is going to be a lot of meetings. There is going to be a lot of discussion. I don't believe the CAO's time is best spent developing the coalition. I think the CAO's time is best spent getting our financial house in order, getting our plans worked out, and moving forward in that direction. Now, I get it that it fell onto our laps, and I'm not quite sure how, but I don't believe that is our responsibility at this time. I think there are other groups in town, be it the Friendship Center, be it the Resource Center, be it whoever, that, okay, we got the grant, now you folks run with it because you're in this game already. That's my feeling. I feel we have more important things to do right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's where you guys, if you don't want us focusing on that, we can give it back and say, give it to someone else because we don't have the time. That's all I'm asking. We just cut the cord if that's what we're doing. Let's just cut the cord and move on with it. Yeah. I think it's fine that we attend the meetings and that we're supportive, mm -hmm. but I don't think that it's the best use of your time to be leading the charge. Not Especially right now. At this time. Not right now. Well, it's unfortunate, like in four months you couldn't hire nobody or two months or whatever. It's been a while. Yeah. And it's not like we didn't try. We and, and like last, the week before last, I talked to the Rose Air House, I went to the Oscars place, I've gone everywhere and got a whole bunch of stuff. And it needs, we need that person to, mm -hmm. to corral these people and get these things done. And we got to deal with, we got to deal with the, the people downtown, we got to deal with like there's issues. Well, it, it, but, and this works. But we have to find that person. Well, in yes. my mind, this would be an opportunity to bring the CDC on side. We have Kim well, who works are. full time. See if we can Maybe Kim it. would be the one we should hand this off to, right? It, it just this isn't what Randy should be focusing on right now. And the only reason I brought it up is because I said they're looking at booking stuff, and this is going to cost a lot of money. So I don't want to be spending someone's money if we don't want to do this. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, to go to CEC or ask her if she wants to. Well, ask the feds first if we can even do that, because they might not hand the money over to someone else. So what it'll be, it'll be. Yeah, they, yeah. They, well, the CDC is still our company, so it's the telling mm. It's just spread out. I'll have to confirm that with them, but... Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it works different. It's their money. They're the ones that put the rules, and yeah, what it'll be, it'll be. No, I'm a little lost with that one, too, with the, yeah, yeah. the CDC is supposedly our entity. It's our money. It's our people. I like Trevor's idea. Just let's just cut to the chase and get going. Uh, with like I find it hard to believe. I, if you're meeting with all the big partners in the town, mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe there isn't some sort of worker position that we can't be recreated. Call it something different, and that it's even half time at the hospital or full time that they don't have a you know they can supplement their they're only paying. I don't. I, no, I get what you're saying. I, I, it, it's just not it's not our money yeah. right so when the feds give it they give it with condition yeah so it's not our money. So and I agree with you had it been ours we could have thrown it as what works for us right okay so the directive is to try to farm it off okay and I'll just tell them that we're not participating in a leadership capacity yeah we'll be supportive okay or we may have somebody yeah like try Kim but it's not yeah. I'll ask them what we can do yeah yeah Okay, we need to nail down when are we going to have our planning session. Have we nailed that down? Because I didn't see nope. that on my calendar today. We have to get that done, guys. At yeah. January. So, um, my January is starting to fill up. So, who's available on Monday, January 7th? We don't have council that night, do we? Nope. 
Monday, January 7th. Any takers? Everybody? No, I'm available for a Monday. Yeah, me too. So I'm 6 o'clock? Six o'clock? 5 o'clock? Monday, January the 7th. 7th. 7th, okay. 5 or 6. Do five and get it. Uh, I'm good with five. Yeah. I'm just wondering what everybody else. No, five, That's what I'm waiting for. Five? 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 And provide us with a history lesson and an update. 209 Fisher. Fisher. There's apparently a non occupancy order on that building. Paw Family Resource Center purchased oh, pizza. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, if we can get an update on that. The what? You'll get an update. Huh? January 7th at 5, sorry. There's no occupancy with her? Apparently. Yeah, it's never been lifted after the trying to put the use in it. Yeah, so if we can get an update on what's going on there. It'll probably just be a matter of a letter sent to Randy saying there's no longer using it. And that worked out good. Jesus. Well, they want to do something, right? But So let's get the whole file yeah. and the whole thing. It was, yeah, yeah it was for the use. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly that's what it was. Good to go. Anybody else? Nothing on something. There, there, there's anything in camera? Do you have anything? Nope. Nothing in camera? Are we done? Okay. You have an email. Uh, All right.